added one euro or something like that. Uh, same works for the buttons, and the only extra schematic to that is that there is an LED which can be fired up when uh, the user is allowed to press one of these buttons, or at least when one of the buttons is active. Um, for the QR uh, reading, we used uh, Zebra Crossing, the Zexing library, uh, which is a really nice library. It's available for uh, C++, Java, Android, iOS. Um, really, if you want to do anything with QR codes, uh, decoding, this is the... the this is open source. Uh, this is open source. Uh, it's developed by, if I'm not mistaken, a Google developer who did it in his 20% uh, Google time. And now it's an uh, open source uh, thing. Um, and then this can also run on a Raspberry Pi or you can port it to whatever device you want. It's really easy. Um, for the Bitcoin, uh, it runs a standard QT wallet uh, to be able to have some direct interface with the wallet and to see, okay, how many coins do we have left? Um, this in the future might be different, but for now it's uh, like this. So you are now using this the original uh, Bitcoin QT? Yes, uh, okay. but it's only for maintaining the blocks and to have a direct interface with the uh, with the wallet, mm -hmm. um, the, actually the, the application uses the Bitcoin D, which is a, a remote RC D. Well, the, the RPC thing. Yeah, RPC. That's what I meant. Um, so, so you can just say Bitcoin D uh, Stripe send money to Stripe address and uh, uh, how much money you want to transfer. Uh, it's a really simple interface. You can uh, put this uh, thing on a server and connect uh, with it through the web or whatever you want. Um, it allows uh, standard uh, authentication. You can add extra layers to that. It's, you can you can do practically anything with it and make it as secure as you want it to be. Right now, it's just simply running on the laptop and it just starts the application, sends the money, and then closes the application again. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit into the code. Um, I built a little state machine uh, to get it working. Well, where zero is the default when you just enter the machine, you look at it, it's in default mode. Uh, it will try to look if the a QR code is present in front of the camera. Um, when it, it found a QR code, it will put it to state one, and uh, you will hear a click, and that's when the coin acceptor actually starts accepting coins. Uh, when it is not detecting any QR code, the money will fall right through, and you can get it uh, back in front side. Um, well, when money is inserted, it will move to state two. That means you can't cancel anymore uh, because you threw in money, and uh, the green button will be enabled, like. If you threw in enough money, you can press the green button and then it will be transferred. Um, as soon as you hit the green button, it will move to state 3 and it says Bitcoins are transferred and it has a little delay and a thank you note for uh, its user and thank you for buying our Bitcoins. And uh, That's about it. Um, so what's happening in the while of... This is not actually the code, but some pseudo code I wrote for the presentation. Um, it draws the background, um, it gets the latest Bitcoin price. This is actually not every routine, but it does this every uh, minute. Um, then it checks in which state it's in and uh, what the action should be. And then it draws the text in front of it with the Bitcoin address and the, uh, the rate and all that kind of information. Um, what happens in the check state? Well, this is quite almost what I just explained. Uh, if, if it's in the default mode, it will just try to uh, get some QR code from the camera. If it's in state one, uh, it starts to accept money, so a, a signal will be sent to the Arduino, and it starts uh, receiving the messages about how much money is uh, thrown in. Um, when it's moved to case two, then uh, as soon as money is uh, as soon as there's any some money in the machine and somebody presses accept, then it will send the coins and you will get a small notification. And when that's done, it will show some things. Okay, like I said, the sending of bitcoins is really easy. Um, this is the 
processing implementation of it, you have... Uh, oh, I see you can send toads uh, with this. Uh, yeah, you can send it? Toads. Toads. Uh, sorry, it's a, it's a joke. Send, send two address before. Oh, okay. Also, yeah, yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> <laughs> send toad address. <Yeah. laughs> Um, but you, you call the program, you say uh, your RPC password, uh, which can also be on a remote server, by the way. Um, then the address, which was just scanned and uh, interpreted by the program, uh, it converts the amount to a string, so the <laughs> command line will know what it is. And then you just run the parameters through the program. And it will execute it. Um, well, getting the latest uh, price, uh, th this is the, the most simple first. I was, uh, I always like getting as low level as possible. So I wrote a little socket program which uh, gets the uh, JSON string uh, from the website. Uh, it removes the headers, it analyzes the, the JSON and, and it returns it. Then I started looking and I thought, and I realized that processing had a very simple line which said load JSON object, you throw in the address and then it returns the value. Um, so for now this is it, uh, on the Raspberry version it will actually have the socket connection. Um, but th really this is the, the easiest way to uh, get it running. Bitcoin average, uh, is that the, the index uh, of Mt. Gox and, and other... Yes, um, okay. Bitcoin average, average uh, yeah. 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 Okay. it takes all the exchanges, takes the average, but you can also be like, okay, we want to, uh, right now I'm working on the uh, implementation of Bitstamp, mm -hmm. so we don't have to have all the coins available. Mm -hmm. um, and when you can say then, okay, I want to get the Bitstamp price, uh, add a little to it, and then... Uh, show it to the user and then you can buy the bitcoins immediately when the uh, user has accepted to buy it. Um, on Friday we had a talk with uh, Bitonic who would also be interested in building an API and it would be great to have an interface to that so you don't need to manually send bitcoins to the uh, ATM and then uh, retrieve them again or get the uh, it, it's just more hassle and it, you, you uh, wear the uh, risk of the Bitcoin dropping a lot after you bought it and you're not getting the right price for it again. So that is really something we're planning working on. So that brings us to the future plans. Um, well, the next thing that will be implemented is the coin acceptor. Uh, this will be implemented within a month uh, and then we can accept a two, uh, 50 euro bills. Um, yeah, you mean the uh, note acceptor? Yeah, what did I say? It, uh, I, I thought you said coin acceptor. Ah, um, I, I meant note yeah. acceptor indeed, uh, that the coin acceptor is already in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not really convenient since not everybody has like more than one or two euros on them. And if you want to buy pizza with bitcoins, it's just not enough. Um, so this will be soon. Um, what would be really nice is to have a car terminal in there. Um, and we had some communication about it with the bank uh, this week and it's very likely to have this implemented by January and this would also uh, open a door to uh, transferring the bitcoins to uh, euros again because you can enter your card, say how much uh, bitcoins you want to convert again you send the bitcoins to uh, a newly created address and then it can transfer it to your uh, bank account. So this would mean people can stand in front of this ATM all day, like it would be a stock exchange buying and selling bitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know if that, that will happen. This, uh, this uh, terminal, uh, any idea, is, it, is that open? I mean, do you have to buy a certain terminal from a certain company or is um, it... Uh, well, the, the, the terminals itself are really not open. I, I mm -hmm. think the source code should be somehow open uh, to prevent people from breaking into it, uh, but we wouldn't have access to it. Um, but you have usually a very easy interface like USB, serial or Ethernet, uh, where you can say transfer money to or from uh, this account and how much money it should be. Uh, so, I mean, 
If I start a new company, I can also build these terminals. Um, yes, mm -hmm. but I think you do need a lot of certificates and licenses oh, yeah, to okay. actually not gonna like it. connect yeah, it to okay. the bank. Okay. But there are some um, some solutions to it. Okay, but to say like this, I don't completely have to trust the black box. It, it is, if I want to, it can be open. I think so, yeah. or, or at least you can control what's getting in there and what's getting out there and mm -hmm. I'm not, not sure if the terminal itself can be helped. Mm -hmm. um, and last thing we want to implement, like I just said, is connect it to the market and make sure um, the user always gets the latest price and uh, the risk wouldn't be on our side but on the user side. So you can just buy it as soon as the user wants to uh, buy the coins from us. Um, well, thanks for your attention. This was the <laughs> presentation about the bitcoins. Um, yeah, of course, you can ask some questions if there, <laughs> there are questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, and if not, then I would like to go to the... Question. Yes? <coughs> Do you have an idea to, for the reverse process? to also include a coin dispenser. Because I saw this beautiful yes. pipe on that thing yeah. coming out. And is it going to go clink, 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 clink? We do have a, a gambling machine in our living room, uh, which has all nice kinds of features like uh, throwing out coins. Uh -huh. And uh, we were already looking at it like, okay, if we throw that in and it, it can eject coins, then it will be really great to say, okay, you can uh, transfer your Bitcoin money to it. And you say, okay, throw it out. And then <laughs> yeah. you can hit, uh, hit jackpot. Um, and also it would be really interesting to see if we can uh, transfer the uh, gambling machine to a Bitcoin gambling machine where you can send money to, you can gamble, and then you can pay it out in bitcoins again. But if uh, the machine doesn't work, you lost the gamble. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, indeed. No, and um, the company we were talking to, uh, Bitonic, uh, also had a nice idea of having a candy machine uh, which would accept bitcoins, so you can select something, you transfer the money, and then uh, your candy will come out paid by bitcoins. I have a nice idea, a machine where you uh, put uh, a lot of money in and there's only one, uh, two buttons, a green one for uh, buying and a red one for selling and then you can just stand there all day hitting either button and try to make some money. <laughs> that, that, that would be great indeed. It would like so, sort of be like gambling but... <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? All right, let's wrap it up. Uh, yes, uh, when do you plan to have built the next version? Um, the next version... Um, at, at first we will improve this with the uh, node acceptor and uh, be, uh, the parallel to that we will be developing the version 2 and actually we're working on that already. Mm -hmm. uh, and we hope to have it done by the end of January. Okay. Uh, there will be a Bitcoin cafe uh, if in half way February, if I'm not mistaken. Is that a meetup? Uh, that's a meetup about Bitcoin, and uh, there will be approximately 150 people there. Um, so we, we're trying to get it done by then and have a good version, and which works better than this with the laptop behind it mm -hmm. and setting it up and all that kind of stuff. It should just be plugging it in, entering the internet password, and just have it running, or even with uh, yeah, the UMTS. Something like that. Yeah. And do you plan to build a business around this? Um, we weren't planning on building a business around it, but um, since we built this machine and people are really enthusiastic about it, and uh, also um, at least one bank showed some uh, really showed interest, uh, so we're looking at what we can do, and maybe, it, yeah, maybe it's a good idea to, <laughs> yeah develop a real version which can be exploited. Yeah. Great. So, let's go to the demo. Uh, Maurice, we are really honors. Uh, some, some of you have might have seen uh, the machine already. Do you have some? What? Oh, some the, the mic. Yes. So 
this uh, machine works. Quite simple, actually. I have an app on my phone. Uh, for now, it's only Android, but uh, we're planning on uh, making something work for iPhone users as well because iPhone doesn't allow it. So I get the Bitcoin app, my Bitcoin wallet. This is my Bitcoin address, and I can scan it here. You see the lights light up, so it confirms that I've got my address. And now I can just add in money yeah, as much as I wish, actually. My uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> Sounds cool. I think you should still put a bell in it and it goes ding! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Why well, it doesn't pick it up right now? Uh, so <laughs> it's your Murphy's Law. <laughs> Murphy's Law, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I added the money and I um, I think I had an offer, I can press the green button and it will send uh, the bitcoins to me. Okay, cool. Maybe there's still some way to, to check if. Uh, it does it display something on the screen, like when you put stuff in? Yes, yes it, it displays the wallet on top of the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, it then displays the amount of money you put in, and it displays the exchange rate that it got from Bitcoin average. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So when you get uh, you put in the money, it also displays how much Bitcoin you get for the money, and then you can push OK, and then send it immediately, so you receive it on your phone. Okay. Cool. Yes. Wow. Oh, that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. What's the QR code for? This QR code, yeah, if you don't have the app, you can scan this and download the QR code. All right. Uh, okay. Is the QR code for the Bitcoin wallet? Yeah, yeah, so you can scan it and then you get this program from the uh, Google Play Store. Right. So oh, is that uh, Andre Schilbach? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. cool. Yeah. Okay. Is, uh, I think it's actually the only one that actually uh, saves the wallet on your mm -hmm. phone mm -hmm. instead of an external service. Oh, okay. um, I'm not sure. There if might you be. want to use Android, there's Mycelium. Mycelium also, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I noticed there are some apps that store your wallet off-site. So e Electrum website. also, or Electrum doesn't have a Bitcoin app, or a, a really bad one, I think. Oh, okay. yeah, because there have been some exchanges that you know, some some Bitcoin banks that mm -hmm. were hacked because yeah. everyone stores them in one place. So oh, yeah. yeah. If you store it in one place, it's you know, bad idea. Then. It's worth the effort to, to hack that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but fortunately, fortunately, nobody does that. <laughs> yeah, no, but nobody yeah. does that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the Bitcoin ATM. It's pretty simple actually. You, you scan it, you put in the money, you press the green button, you get the Bitcoin. There's so a coin stuck in there. Yeah, I know. I, I, I made this thing in the fab lab. It's a bit too narrow, so <laughs> you get the bit stuck. Oh yeah, and if it's not active, you know, you just put that money. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that's handy. So you can just accidentally lose your money. It's, it's um, pretty feel safe. Uh, w would it be possible to show the inner inside? Is that, or is that difficult? Uh, it's a, of course that's it possible. Is possible but it is. depends if you really want that. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe uh, j just to show that it's not interesting. <laughs> that, uh, Yeah, I'm going to do it. 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 Yeah, I'm going